All right. So we usually we usually play a little music intro before beforehand. Yeah. Uh, but Zin and I are usually a little computer illiterate, <laughs> so we don't know how to play the track while. Well, while we're going. has so, two uh, computers, so it's unfair. I only have one. I don't. I don't know where you got that second okay, one from. Touché. He must have just like stole it off of like some helpless child. And I'm not going to stoop that low. Get a second computer. It, it must it must be his girlfriend. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> We're not giving him any credit. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but instead, we're going to do the acoustic version, just me and Corey. All right? And you can join in. Rice, uh, uh, Mick, you can join in whenever you want, just however you feel. Ready? All right, Corey, you got this. Remember? Yeah. It goes. Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Voices by Corey and Zinzinix. Well, everyone, welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. It's a beautiful way to start the podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us. His name is Mick Lauer, also known as Rice Pirate on Newgrounds. And we are fortunate, me, Voices by Corey, and Zinzinix. That's me. Get to talk to this beautiful, beautiful man. So how are you doing, Mick? I'm good. I uh, I, I think I'm still kind of riding off that high of, uh, you know, after you publish something, after you work on something for months, and then you you publish it. And then your body starts to fall apart because apparently it was all stuck together with like duct tape and <laughs> adrenaline that was keeping you going. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of in that phase right now. Yeah, I'm still kind of in a daze, but I didn't really stop uh, working. As soon as I published uh, the second chapter of the project I'm working on, I pretty much just started into the third. And um, I don't know if I was trying to bypass the hangover of the work by just keep keep down in the hair of the dog and keep working. <laughs> um but it's yeah, it's definitely caught up a little bit. But no, I'm it's, I'm good. I'm great. That's good to hear, man. And of course, this this series that you're talking about is Blood Sun Vendetta. And like you just yeah. said, you released uh, chapter two. Was it uh, a couple days ago? Right, like earlier in the week. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it feels like another lifetime ago. But I think <laughs> it was probably just last week. Yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit shorter than uh, the first chapter, but. In a sense, it was, in my opinion, really, really good and had a lot of content that just builds up into what's going to be Chapter 3. Um, with, without a lot of spoilers, yeah. uh, we get to meet one of the other characters, Jose, and we get to meet... Um, what 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 was the name of the character who loves uh, Spicy <laughs> Menudo? <laughs> <laughs> I literally just have him... I. He's just Spicy Man, and then it's... Spicy Man. That's all, because he doesn't really have a name. He's just Spicy Man. Mama, Jose yeah. being spicy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, look, the, the first chapter was, I think, 12 and a half minutes of animation, and this one was about six. And the thing is, is that when I initially planned this project, all the chapters were going to be two to four minutes long. So technically, they're all way over the length that they should be. Yeah, um, I think but, um, you said the episodes were supposed to be eighteen minutes long as well. So yeah, I already fucked that up. Um, yeah. <laughs> because chap, if you combine chapters one and two, that's already an eighteen and a half minute long episode. So uh, yeah, the first episode's just going to be really freaking long. And but you know, this is all learning process for me. When I board things out. In my head, things are moving a lot faster. Um, but then, you know, when you're actually animating it, I just kept feeling like I needed to add scenes and 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 draw out certain things. Because unlike comedy, where you know it's just it's a, a mile a minute, you know, um, everything's just moving so fast, just cuts and cuts. Yeah. With this, like I am trying, I'm attempting at least to to create a mood and an atmosphere, and it's. It's really uh, a, an awakening for me as a creator, realizing just how hard that is to do and how much time it requires. You know, if you really want to earn a moment or or create suspense, you got to draw shit out. And that means more animation <laughs> or at least more runtime, at least. Um, but yeah, so that that's definitely something I've been learning. But the other chapters... I don't know. I think some of the more actiony ones might actually be quite a bit shorter. So there's going to be a weird. There's no. There's no regular 
uh, chapter length as far as things go. I have in my boards, there's roughly the same amount of boards. But when it comes to execution, for all I know, some chapter is going to be three minutes and another one's going to be 12, you know? Yeah. We'll see. And, and it's cool that you said you try to incorporate some sort of mood or, or theme into each episode. And you clearly see that in comparison to chapter one and chapter two. You know, chapter one, you have uh, the mysterious figure being led by the professor and he's just chatting yeah. it up the entire time. It's it's rainy. It's dark out and they go into the temple and the lighting is all it's it comes in when it needs to. And just the different use of colors to give it like this mysterious um vibe of some sort it's it's really cool the way that you put everything together. i'm trying <laughs> yeah like it, it really shows the detail that you did put in to your animation which is something that everybody wants to see from the creator and just the constant updates on your twitter it shows how much time and effort you put into it and that's that's i'm pretty sure what everybody loves to see it shows that you truly do care about blood sun vendetta and I do. Yeah, and of course the you know the the anime that goes along with it, and that's it's based off of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which people don't know about. If if they don't know about it, that's what it's based off of. You said people don't yeah. know about it. People hey, go nuts for hey, it, so, bro. So, I mean, dude, you'd be surprised. Kinda, you'd be surprised. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, a lot of people are aware of what it is because they've seen some of the memes yeah. or whatever, but. There's a lot of people, like even in Japan, as beloved as it is, especially by other creators, other, you know, creators of, of manga and as well as anime, they're familiar with JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. In fact, there's a lot of references to it, but it's not the most, it's not even close to the most popular uh, IP out there. I mean, I mean, I think One Piece is definitely number one. I don't even know if JoJo makes top 10, honestly, um, but they've just got so many other, I mean, Dragon Ball's still way up there. Naruto is still yeah. way up yeah. there. Yeah, well, even even something obscure to us, like Detective Conan or whatever that is, about that mm. little boy detective, that beat out mm -hmm. when Marvel's released the Avengers. Like, that beat out overseas in Japan. That movie for mm -hmm. Detective Conan beat the Marvel's Avengers compared to every other country. So they do yeah. They do have, like, these huge serials or IPs, like you're saying, that, that top JoJo's, which is impressive because everyone's obsessive. Yeah, and there was another one uh it was like they've got a whole bunch of them but it, it was basically just like a series of magical girls i think it was the series is fate something yeah fate um, stay night but even that whatever was, that is yeah or whatever they had in japan like two years ago that was like big that was like way up there in the top 10 um so yeah they've got a lot of series that maybe aren't quite as popular uh here and i am curious over time um how Jojo will be remembered overseas in terms of its, uh, in terms of its audience, in terms of, I mean, obviously the people that love it, love it. Um, and then there's just a lot of people that either don't get into it, uh, or they, they tried to get into it like the first part. And then they were like, fuck this. I, I don't even get what this is all about. Um, that's usually the breaking point for people is part one. Part two is a decent, I mean, I love part two, but for some people still, that's not like the Jotaro stands and, all these kinds of, you know, powers that we're used to seeing. Um, but I still love it. And you got into it, yeah. what, 25 years ago, right? Yeah, uh, probably a little more than that. Um, because I was, I mean, I'm 40 now, so I'm basically like 8,000 in, in internet years. But <laughs> when, I, when I was growing up, I mean, I think... I think JoJo first started publishing around 86. It, it started publishing close to the time that uh, Dragon Ball was publishing, strangely enough. Um, Whoa. I think it came out a little bit after. I'd even, I couldn't but, even imagine that because yeah. Dragon Ball got yeah. so huge. No one ever said anything about the manga for JoJo's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I grew up with those. Like I, I, I was living in Taiwan and I was visiting there uh, all through the 80s, you know, um, so I I grew up with with all that stuff. I wasn't really into JoJo then. Um, I think I started picking. I picked it up when I was like like eleven or twelve. I started reading it, but even then, that was still part one. So it was kind of I don't know. It was kind of weird. Like I didn't quite get it. Would you say that it's like one of your top mangas or or animes out there? Like, does it fall within like your top three or top five in general? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because. I, uh, 
Because I'm kind of writing a series on it that took me like yeah, two well, years, three years yeah. so far. No big deal. <laughs> hey, I mean, you could still be doing it if it's like a top twenty-five. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Come on, Zane. a lot. Okay, a lot like my my musical taste. There was like I got imprinted as a teenager. So in my teenage years, whatever I really, really loved b- back then is pretty much where I cut off a lot of new uh input in terms of things i'm not saying that i i haven't picked up new interests or enjoyed new music or new shows but during those formative years of my life those are the ones that i'll just never be able to shake they're like a part of my psyche um so yeah i I don't watch a whole ton of anything really anymore because i'm usually just working um (laughs) cory yeah so i cory did you notice anything about episode two about the credits about the credits? Yeah. How many animators were there? Oh, I know that Mick's the only animator. The only animator for episode two. So that means solely Mick pushed out this product day in and day out. I'm imagining just to get this out in a timely fashion. Because the wait yep. from chapter zero to chapter one was like a year and like nine months. And then you, you had yeah. this one come out within three, which is impressive. It was a, it was was It was a little over three months, but it looks like it's less than three. Because I... Yeah, but it, it took me it took me almost a little bit more than three months. Um, but yeah, I mean, the last the first chapter we had, I had a few people help with like, I think a total of nine scenes out of like 150 or whatever. And um, some of it was like cleanup and some of, there was one shot where it was a background. But. Even that was pretty much, and I'm not like, oh, I did it all and fuck those guys. <laughs> no, I appreciate their contributions greatly. Yeah. I absolutely No, do. you're the number one um, JoJo fan. No one can top you. You are the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly evident. <laughs> but yes, so th- this one, I was just like, it's shorter. Um, and I had already animated so much of it that I was just like, fuck it. I just want to see what happens. How long is this going to take me by myself if I just rock through it? And initially in my updates, I had said like, hey, in a perfect world, I'd have a a background artist and a cleanup artist and we'll be able to knock out like three minutes of animation in two months, you know? Yeah. Uh, Well, essentially, that is what I'm doing now, but by myself. So that's cool. I like that. It's still too long. It's still too long of a process because my chapters are too long. That's my fault. Um, And I'm just one guy and I'm I can't work any faster so the thing that makes me confident is that if I do actually ever get that help it would bump up the timeline quite a bit more actually than I initially thought so you know I always said like if I couldn't get help this isn't a project that I'm just gonna let die like I'll just do it myself if I have to but it is you know it's nice to know that I can do it myself so if I have help then it's just a matter of making it faster and I wouldn't be surprised if if anyone reaches out to you and wants to help you with this, because like, like I've already said, and, and like Zinn has said, you know, the detail that's gone into it, it just shows that, you know, you do care about the project a lot. You know, it means a lot to you. Um, so I, I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to come on and help you, you know, with any of the, of the scenes or any background. It, I it can could, give you a couple reasons. Is it Jojo? It's because oh. they don't like Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe they, they were, they were abused by a Jojo in their childhood. <laughs> okay. There, there is definitely like a, the project doesn't really have much traction in terms of views. The people who are watching it really enjoy it. But like, I think combined both chapter one and two and chapter one has been out for a long time, but Combined, chapter one and two have barely, I think, even broken 100K yeah. in terms and of that's I noticed that. So a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times people don't necessarily want to be attached to something that isn't going to get a whole lot of exposure because even if exposure isn't the the payment, like they want to get paid, obviously, but they also probably want to be part of something that's also going to appear to be very, very popular. Um, and then the other thing is, is what you said before, which was that clearly I, I look like I, I have a lot of love for this and I've invested a lot of energy and time into it. And I think, not that other artists can't do that, you know, I, I know they can, but your passion for your own project is always, especially if it's like really close to you, is always going to far supersede anything that comes from people who are, are hired 
you know, to be a part of something because for them, it's a job. And I'm not saying they can't do a great job. I'm just saying that their personal investment is not going to be as great, obviously. Um, and so I think, I don't know. I, I don't think it's intimidating. I don't think anything I've made is like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe he did that. I could never do that. I don't think it's that <laughs> yeah. at all. I think it's more of like, wow, this guy, why did he do, why, why did he spend so much time doing <laughs> why that did shit? He, why, I don't, uh, why did he travel yeah. eight days across Mexico just to make a fan JoJo animation yeah. for three years of I need his to go back. So I, yeah, I need, I need to go back actually. Well, um, while we're on the topic yeah. though, let's talk about the, the reception and how you felt about it. Did you think it was going to be bigger than it is right now? Or did you just have no expectations and then you just want to make this and that's it? I think it's a, okay. I, I'll be dead honest with you. It's both. It's both. <laughs> so one is that when I made it, I knew it wasn't a parody. And so already when I first started, cause I had years prepping for this while I was like, posting storyboards and and all that kind of stuff and talking about the premise and i had a lot of fans friends family everybody that were just like what are you doing what wait why why, why are you doing this oh my how long God. is this taking like what like it's cool and all like i'm happy for you that you seem like you're motivated but what i mean is how does this make money again yeah or what, right who is this for you know like all that stuff and so I, I kind of had a feeling <laughs> that when I dropped the, the first chapter that uh, it wasn't going to be like on YouTube trending or some shit. Um, but at the same time, uh, I did. I don't know. I, I think I did probably expect more of a response. I Look, I'm fine with it not having a great response because or at least uh, in numbers. Um, because the quality of the response is what I really, really enjoy. And not all of it's positive. I mean, some of it's pretty critical, you know, like, Hey, there's a lot of exposition and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And I appreciate that. You know, obviously the only way someone knows it has a lot of exposition is if they sat through the whole fucking thing. So, you know, I, I just appreciate the quality of the responses. Um, and for the people who are interested, they seem genuinely interested and, and appreciative of it, which is always nice, but not necessarily necessary. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, as far as the response, that's the that's the long answer is basically I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. I do. I did know that this was going to be kind of niche. I did kind of expect more of a, a response, um, but I'm totally fine with it. Not. Uh, and I'm just going to that's why I just kept pushing through. You know, I wasn't going to sit around and look at analytics and, and all that kind of shit. I just got right onto chapter three because I. Until anyone sees the entire full first episode, six chapters, I don't expect anyone to be invested that much. Yeah. Like, nobody even knows what the fuck's going on. So how am I supposed to expect anyone to be invested? Um, for the people that are, just based on what's been put out there, thank God bless them. But <laughs> I'd, if I was watching the show, I'd be like, okay, and, you know, so I totally get it. It's just a really long process to get there, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but that that's one of the good things is just from the first two chapters alone— there is a lot of information and it does leave you saying, okay, now what, like what's, what's going to happen? Like after the first chapter, you're like, oh shoot, what's going to happen? I, I don't want to, if no one has seen it yet, you know, go watch it right. and, and see what happens. And even after chapter two, you, you kind of wonder what's going to happen, you know, to Jose. It's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information left that's, you know, that can be told. So with that being said, like, yeah, what, how many chapters do you ultimately want to, you know, put out there with, uh, you know, with BSV. Isn't it, isn't it four episodes <laughs> with chapters in them right now? Or is it five episodes with chapters in them? Dude. Oh my God. What? This, <laughs> it, 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 admitting any of this is impossible. Where I actually feel like, like a fucking psycho. Um, <laughs> so, Holy shit. You got I master have... plans. Oh no. Oh, I have man. three. I only have three episodes completely boarded so that's 18 chapters yes um, okay and the thing though is that that just that just leads up to the first stand battle or, or no the third episode is the the first stand battle um the second episode is a battle um but not quite like a you know like a, a stand battle um so th there's I have no idea how long this fucking thing is. I do know <laughs> what I know what happens. Like I know the general gist of what happens and so I don't know after 
after the third episode, obviously, if I'm working at the pace I'm working at now, not only will I my fingers fall off, but I'll probably <laughs> it's still gonna be years, years yeah. until that's gonna fucking happen. I don't, um, I don't want to, I don't want to skip this question though. Let's yeah. um, let's talk about how you feel now compared to when you started, because three yeah. years or however many years, yeah. like what is it four now since the initial like storyboard? No, I think now it's three. I think That's, now it's so. Weird. How do you feel now as compared to when you start a project? Because many people can relate to starting a project and then getting yeah. into it and then regretting it later. So let's talk about yeah. that. I would say that the how I feel about it is I am never short of I'm never short of being motivated by it. Um, oh damn! I, I kept thinking like I was going to hit a wall eventually where you know, some kind of burnout, some, something, but it just, it, it's weird. I, I feel like I almost went through several burnouts, but like, I just worked through them. I, I, it's not the healthiest thing to do, but at <laughs> this point, I honestly don't even know what that burnout would feel like. In fact, if I don't work on this for a good portion of the day, I start to get, that's when I start to get antsy. Um, it's and it's like not an like anyone's now. holding... It is. No, that's what I mean. It's like, I feel like I almost something, there's a flip like switched at some point, And now it's just like a part of my daily life um, where I feel like something's missing if I'm not working on it, uh, which would be great if this was something that I knew. It would be great if it didn't feel like this was a project that um, like I know it's going to eat up a lot of years of my life. And I have no idea really what the the full game plan for its execution is. Um, but at the same time, if I sat around wondering, is this even possible? I would never do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. yep. So I, I took the dive. And at this point, I've just been rolling down the hill working on this thing. And the the good thing is, is unlike a video game or any promised finished work, I feel like because this is clearly a passion project and um, I'm, I'm working on it mainly for myself and obviously I want to share it with other people, but it is mainly for myself that no matter what happens um, down the line, what I've learned in the process so far, I am so thankful for. Like, I'm really glad I've, I've taken the dive and as scary as the idea of trying to complete this thing before I die is um i can't take a i can't not appreciate what i feel like i've learned um just working on it every day and you know animating every day drawing every day and you know from a lot of times now that i can't go to the gym i just wake up roll over and i just start working oh my god <laughs> your, your that family. sounds like me that sounds like me <laughs> yeah. jesus your peers and family must be feeling really bad for you and <laughs> like this <laughs> no this, this guy's I, just I think, hunched over every single day. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. If you saw me working, you'd think I was a king, dude. I mean, oh, I found I've, I found ways of of working where I don't look like a like a slave over a desk because I'm either <laughs> I'm either lying on my back because I I draw all my assets in uh, Procreate, so I'm either lying on my back with like you know. Uh, some movie that I'm not watching and some music playing in the background. And I'm just drawing for like, you know, hours and hours. And then uh, if I'm at my desk, then I'm standing because I have a standing desk and I'm ah. you know, doing some editing and stuff like that. But I'm never like, I, I don't think I could work sitting down. Laying, laying down is great. I fucking love that. What the fuck? You <laughs> could just, you could just make a Jojo animation while laying in your bed. <laughs> I, I, I've never I, I can tell that. you uno cool. <laughs> unequivocally uh, that, yeah, in terms of what you've seen, 90% of the art that you saw was done with me on my back. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mick That's is not a, a legend. <laughs> he is yeah. changing is awesome. the game, changing the way how animation is done. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he just has an office full of fucking beds. Everyone's just laying down. They, they work yeah. at his studio. Like, this is uh, great. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't really have a bed. It's more of like a mattress topper that I put on the ground. Um, I still oh, no. live very much like a bachelor, uh, but... You know, I don't mind. It's comfortable. It's good for my back, I think. Yeah, I think. no, I have friends that did that too. They're mostly foreign friends, though. I'm not gonna lie, but people. Hey, like I'm I'm that. half Chinese, so there you go. Taiwanese. Yeah, half there Taiwanese. We there yeah. we go. I'm glad you corrected that. 
<laughs> Wait, well, I corrected I... you on your ethnicity? <laughs> well, no, because if I say I'm half Taiwanese, if I say I'm half Taiwanese, 90% of people are like, oh, I didn't know you were Thai. And it's like, no, no, that's a different place. That's yeah. that's Thailand. That, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just say Chinese because it's, it's easier to say. Yeah. It's easier for the fucking normies. Yeah, it's easier for you whitos. Fucking... God damn it. Us gringos. Yeah. Well, you white one... devils. <laughs> now, one of the things that I wanted to ask you a little bit later, but I guess it's, it's a good time to ask it anyway, is you know, now that you're animating more, um, do you feel like your future is going to consist more of, of animating being more on the animation side than voice acting or do you still want to is it mainly going to be like animating as my side gig and then you know voice acting as my yep you know my money job and, and all that stuff very fair question i would say that uh anyone who knows me knows that even though i do occasionally voice act here and there in some pretty cool stuff i'm like i'm really proud of the of some of the projects i'm a part of and some of the roles too but the truth is i'm i'm a fucking voice hobbyist in terms of how often I work. I mean, I know in terms of people that are actually making a living voicing, um, even if they're doing stuff like anime, which it, it, you know, it adds up, especially if you're working regularly. Um, but I, I don't work that much. I mean, these guys are working on the daily, you know, I work, I maybe voice a gig every couple weeks, maybe. Um, so voicing has never been like a major staple of my income. Occasionally you get a gig that pays really well. Uh, yeah. And occasionally you'll be on a series where there's like more regular sessions, but I don't, I don't voice act enough for it to be anything other than like a side gig for me. Um, oh, okay. In terms of, an, yeah, in terms of like where I really make my money. Cause that is a question. Some people ask, they're like, how the fuck are you making any money? Cause my Patreon's great. <laughs> it's like, I think it's at like 1400 or something like that. Oh, and wow, nice. That I mean, the thing you know, is that like, that doesn't even cover my rent. So clearly, I need to find other things <laughs> to do yeah. um, to to make money. Uh, so I strip. Uh, no, I don't. Um, yeah, finally, he comes out yeah, for it. I came out. We'll I throw came some out. singles your way. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, sometimes I'll do like uh, I'll do commercial animation commissions, and so they're not they're not exactly what I want to do, but they're closer to what I want to do. Um, in terms of it being animation. So I still feel like I'm, I'm operating, you know, I'm still looking at keyframes. I'm still working with animate and after effects and I'm still, you know what I mean? Like it's still in the same family, just like a distant cousin. I don't really like to talk to, but Hey, I got to cause they're here and <laughs> let's just deal with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those end up, those, uh, some of those pay pretty well and, and they'll, they'll keep me going for the next, you know, they'll keep me going for like a couple months or something like that. Um, so yeah, I still, I still have to hustle and get the side thing. And even though blood sun is pretty much a full-time job, um, yeah, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta make the money where you can, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Your favorite, uh, voice acting, um, job had to have been, what is yes. it? XXX, uh, no. Ghostbusters by Zone? Fuck you. I think that <laughs> one was, I, I'm fairly certain I saw that somewhere in your favorites. I think that, oh, on, boy. I had it right here in my notes. I don't know where the oh. source is from. Well, I'm fairly certain that was your favorite thing. The voice was did. I. Wait, was I even credited in that? <laughs> you were. That's how I found it. It's on Newgrounds. You <laughs> okay. credited into the. Oh, you know what? I was asked. By Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zone asked. Him, Zone was like, "Do you want to be credited in this? Are you sure?" And I was like, "I don't care, man. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Go I ahead. do it for the money." <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zone's work is Zone's work is great. You know. Oh, I mean, phenomenal! I think they spent yeah. a whole year on that animation. Yeah, I was. I, look, I mean. Even if it's not something I'm going to put on a reel or whatever, but I, I still, you know, I, when I see people work on something they're passionate about, of course you want to be a part of that. You know, it doesn't matter if it pays or if it's popular or whatever it is. It's just being a part of something that somebody else is passionate about is, I don't know, it feels good, you know? Yeah, oh, I, I, yeah. I feel you on that. Like, you know, I, I've been working with uh, with more, you know, Newgrounds members on, on their projects, and when they reach mm -hmm. out to me and they you know, discuss what they have in mind for their animation. I hear the passion in it. I'm like, hell yeah, mm -hmm. I want to be in a project with somebody who's very passionate about their 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 creation and they dive into right. the characters and everything about the story. It's like you want to work with those people and, you know, have your name credited with that because it shows that, you know, you cared about their work too. It's really cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I will say let's be perfectly fair, though, because you have worked with a lot of people and we are on new ground. So all of us here are either guilty of it or aware of it. And that is 
there is a lot of passion when you have an idea. Ideas are very, you, it's easy to be passionate about an idea. Um, but the execution of that idea, that that's where your passion is then tested. Exactly. You know, that's where it yep. gets forged in a fire or does it shatter like glass? You know? It, yeah. It's just, yeah. Does it become tempered steel or, or yeah, just little shards of rock? Um and a lot of times that that does happen, but I think that that's a natural. I think that's a good thing to go through, um, just because I think it's almost like going through certain relationships in your life. You know, you you're hoping for the best, <laughs> and then it, maybe it doesn't quite pan out. But what happens is, is you finally you finally meet the right one, and all of a sudden you're like, this just works. Like I'm I'm just motivated. I'm working on this now. Like I'm I'm all in. Like you know what I mean. And so. I don't know. I think maybe this has been that. Maybe I forced that on myself, but that's what it feels like now. It just feels right, this project that I'm working on. And and that's yeah. and that's always what you want, man. And I, I want I want to touch on um like a comparison of both, you know, JoJo and voice acting. And you actually got sure. to voice in the series for the English dub. Um I don't know if a lot of people know that, but you got to voice Leon is it Ab- Leon Abaccio? Abaccio, yeah. Abaccio, Abaccio. So mm-hmm. tell me how that was being a part of which looks to be like a, a very passionate a show you're very passionate about. How how did it feel yeah. actually getting to be a voice in that show? I I mean, it was a dream come true, obviously. I, I mean, it was one of the yeah. one of three goals I had when I came to L.A. Um, was to be a part of JoJo. It just very simple. I had some pretty simple goals that none of them included money or fame. It was like <laughs> being a, it was like a FromSoft game. Uh, a JoJo anime and a Nickelodeon show. Um, so those were just, you know, because I grew up with Nickelodeon and I yeah. love from software and I obviously have a, spent my whole life inspired by JoJo. So I think maybe that's also why I'm not so, I, I come off as not necessarily the most motivated voice actor because those all kind of happened uh, already. And so I, I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot of goals when it comes to that. Well, don't we um, don't we have more normal goals? This guy wants to be on fucking Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> but and te- damn. And technically you have. You technically you have. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, there was there the the show actually was um Lego City Adventures. So yeah. That was yeah, yeah. So that was really fun and it had a great cast and I loved the process of it and and all that. But that all kind of happened at the same time. And then after that it's almost like the universe was like, "You good now? You, yeah, you, you okay." Because then, like, like no, nope. there was like no other work after that. It was just kind of like everyone <laughs> forgot who I was, which is fine because I've just been working on my project too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm. They don't need to bother me. I don't need to bother them. Um, occasionally, you know, if somebody does reach out and and they want something, I'm al- obviously always very appreciative of it, and I'll always do the best job I can. But I just, I honestly, if I have to be honest with myself, have not been. Get, I haven't been doing the hustle. You know, I haven't been really pushing for it and um the results speak for themselves you know in terms of what you you get what you put in kind of and i pushed really hard i think when i first got here um and i guess the opportunities manifested you know in their ways um sorry what what did you ask for oh jojo so yeah i mean it was a dream it was <laughs> no, a dream come fine, true yeah. uh i when i got the email it was very short very short email that was just like hey you you got cast and i had to read it like 10 times they like zoomed in the font just to make sure like it's almost like those lotto numbers like if you win the lottery and then they keep reading the ticket even though it's clearly the right numbers yeah. you just keep reading it because you can't believe it um so yeah that was that that was great and then being on the show was also great um i think the one thing uh, because that was the first show i did here in la where i had a lot of sessions and, and regular sessions and you know we're on the clock and the thing is is like when we're making stuff on new grounds when we're making our things a lot of times if you're doing voicing you can do it like 10 times if you want you'll send yeah. maybe two or three takes but you'll do it 10 times to get it right you know yep. and when you're on the clock and you're dubbing and you got your director it's like you do one they're like okay let's get a safety of that okay oh and then you, shit and then you don't <laughs> yeah. get two or, takes well no if you're not getting it they'll direct you into other things but a lot of times like the the take you do whether it's the first or second they'll be like okay yeah no that's it that's good 
But in your oh, head, shit. because you're yeah. so used to doing it so <laughs> yeah. many times, in your head, there's like, no, 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 wait, hold on. There's like, I, I, I could have done it this I, way or yeah. I could have done it that way. <laughs> and I learned that you only get a few of those. Uh, with, I mean, some directors are definitely more uh, open to it, but you're on the clock again. So it, it better be within the time frame. You know, you can't eat up shit with you second guessing yourself and doing all this yeah. other stuff. Um, and so if you really feel like, there's a line that you really need to do differently. You can only pull out that card a few times. Um, and you better be ready. You better, that better be the take, you know, yeah. <laughs> that you really want to do. Did you have and, to do that on the JoJo? Yeah. I mean, that's the problem is that I love JoJo so much that for me, like if I'm doing an anime that I, I don't fucking know this character, you know what I mean? Like I just see a <laughs> clip of it and whatever. Yeah. If I do a, if I do a line and they're like, that's good. I'll be like, awesome. Cool. And then that we move on. But because I'm invested in this character, when I do the line and be like, cool, that's good. I'm like, well, hold on. <laughs> I mean, one second. Can we just go, can we just try, can we just try something else? Uh, you know? And, and that was one thing I learned just in general about not just dubbing. I mean, that's, that's a lot of voice, uh, a lot of voice stuff is a lot of it is based on your first instincts and, and, make sure that you know like they're going to be okay with it but what gets published are you going to be okay with it like even the public may be cool with it and the producers may be cool with it but are you going to be cool with it yeah and if you want that to be the case you just you have to i don't know man you just you gotta get you gotta good. be able to yeah you gotta get good that's really it i didn't <laughs> want to say it but you do and i don't even think i'm there like there's plenty of sessions where i i listen back and i see like a show on air and i'm just like oh fuck man. <laughs> like i i knew or i'll drive home or something after the session and i'll just be repeating the line again like an, <laughs> like an insult you wanted to like dish back at somebody but they left the room so you couldn't say it to them because it was too late and you just keep saying it to yourself I mean, it's too late. You know, you've already recorded it. You're not going to go back and change the line, but I just, sometimes it's hard to shake. I feel you on that, though. Like, there's times where I'll, you know, just recording in my in my booth by myself, or, like, I'll do a, a call on Discord and do a live session, and, you know, you do one take, and, like, yeah, that was good. Let, we'll, we'll go with that one. I'm like, all right, cool. Or I'll record on my own, send it in yeah. to the director, and then it's, like, either two or three takes, and they'll choose one, and when I see the final product, I'm like, Oh man, that could have been done so much better. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Or worse. Why did you choose that yeah, take? Like, why? That was the worst no. one. I didn't want you to take Dude. that one. <laughs> Dude, there are there's this. I'm not gonna say who they are, but there I've worked with a number of clients, and it got to the point where I just kind of stopped sending multiple takes. I you you know what I do is actually that's not true. What I do is I would send uh, the master of like all the takes I did, and then I would send um basically like a, a shortened version that was just the takes i liked and then i would send that to them and i think a lot of times they end up going with that a because it's just you know they don't have to listen to that entire track in yeah. order to get what they need but also if they're like uh eh, i'm not feeling that then they can go into the master track and see that there's like three or four of those and then ah. they can you know pick and choose if there's one in there that they like um but the reason why i did that was yes partially for them to make it easier for them but also for me so I was like, hey, you know, there's four takes, but hint, hint, you know. The, Th these think are the this, ones that I like. One, these are the, yeah, these are the ones I think uh, might work. Yeah. Yeah. Not trying to tell you how to do your job, but yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not telling you how to do your job, but dude, do this, please. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's crazy about voice acting, because I did this thing called groundbreaking where Corey was in it, too, and I'd have everyone send me like three lines. And, yeah. and depending on the experience of the voice actors, some lines would sound differently because they recorded them at different times. So, like, when you're doing JoJo mm. and they choose a take, it's like you've been voice acting all day. You don't know if you're doing it as good as you did in the beginning or if you messed up a little something. So you don't get to hear, like, everything back to back to back. So when you do make a little mistake, that's, that's like, detrimental to your character. Like, I get that. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. I will say, if you ever do multiple takes, just make sure that they're actually multiple takes. That they're not, yeah, very. They're not the same fucking take. Uh, it's a very common thing. I'm not trashing on anybody. I'm sure I did that for a long period of time. In fact, I think sometimes I probably still do that. Like I, I'll do like four takes, and then like I listen to the first and fourth, and I'm like, oh, those are the exact same fucking the take. exact same one. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I've just seen a lot of that uh, where I'll get seven takes of a line, and they're all 
pretty much the same line. <laughs> and you're like, there's no value to that, I guess. I mean, I feel bad because clearly somebody spent the time to do it. But it yeah. was like, if you're going to spend the time to do it, try to make it, you know, different. I mean, not I'm not saying like just go out of your way to make it sound wacky and weird and totally different. But like if the if there's an intention to explore that intention, you know, if you're trying to intimidate somebody and the line is I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to fuck your ass, right? I mean, <laughs> there's there's numerous ways that you can intimidate somebody and say the line um, that aren't just like, I'm going to fuck your ass. I'm going to yeah. fuck your ass. I'm going to fuck your ass. No, I mean, those are all basically the same. Those are basically all the same take. You know what I mean? It's just there's yeah. a little bit of a pacing thing or something, but it's like, I'm going to fuck your ass. You know, like there's, there's you can say it like, I'm going to. Fuck your ass! You know, like, I don't know. I just, there's, I don't know. I, I think that that kind of variation is important. And it's just good practice in general. It is. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Depending on how you said that is different levels of threatening towards my ass. Like, I feel that. Yeah. Now. I get what you're saying. Maybe, maybe the character, maybe the way the character says it is like super dead. Like, just like, I'm going to fuck your ass. You know, like, it's just. <laughs> That's creepy. That's threatening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> but it's still the intent. The intent is to intimidate. But how how are you going about it? You know, and obviously that's going to be based on the character. It's going to be based on the circumstances and based on whatever the director says they need. That, that's that's some good advice because, you know, for any new voice actors out there, that that is a common occurrence where they're just like, I'm going to fuck your ass. I'm going to fuck your ass. I'm going to fuck your ass. OK, choose the best one. But yeah. switching up and very and having different variations the way you enunciate, the way you build up, or, you know, you can downplay it a little bit. Like, I'm going to yeah. fuck your ass. Like, the way yeah. that the way that you deliver everything, it it basically creates a new type of persona for the character that maybe you weren't even trying to create, but it's, it sounds good. You know, there, there's a, yeah, lot and a lot of times a lot of people don't know. Absolutely. And even for the directors or the writers, you know, they'll obviously have something in mind based on their just instincts of, of how they did it or how they originally thought of it when they wrote it. But there's plenty of times, you know, when especially like when I work with someone like Stamper or, you know, certain other individuals that they just happen to they have like a thing that they they do sometimes where they just they bring things to the table that you wouldn't ever have thought. But you start to understand that that's what their strength is. So that's why you reach out to them. You're like, I'm going to reach out to this person because I trust that they can do this. Now, that's a little dangerous if you have people like improving, because I think that's a really shit way to do stuff. I hate yeah. it when I get a script and it's like, oh, uh, here's the script. And then it's like character improvs, funny line. And it's just like, dude, come on, man. Are you, pay are you, are you what, what are you paying me for here? Like, what? What are we what's really the, doing? What's here? the matter, Mick? You can't be funny, man. What's going yeah, on? Am I right? Am I am I going to get a writing credit on this too? I mean, did you <laughs> yeah, not exactly. know? Did you not know what you wanted said in this scene? Like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? But a lot of commercial stuff ends up being like that. They always liked improv, and I don't know. It 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 happens. Um, but I think there are scenarios where if you trust the person and you know, like, you know, like, hey. If you could just make up like a funny, you know, you know, like some of those weird wacky things you say, could you just say one of those things here? It's like if yeah. you understand that the person can do it, then I think it's fine to ask. Yeah, of course. Uh, a good example of this is the Newgrounds Final F Fantasy VII collab where uh, Jeff, I think Corey, who's Spaz Kid, uh, Dave, mm -hmm. who's Phantom Arcade, they kind of mm -hmm. improv their script and added a oh, lot yeah. to the animation. If, you, if you've seen that, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, I exactly. Have, yeah. It's the two soldiers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and them laughing, oh. them screwing up their lines and just come up with stuff on the spot added a lot of character to it. But that's because they knew that they could get that from each other. Yeah, if you'd put them on the spot and they were just like two guys that maybe knew each other, but, you know, they weren't like great friends or anything like that. And they were like, all right, you guys just improv a scene. It, it would probably be awkward and stilted as fuck. And feel but, forced, yeah. Yeah, it would be, be so forced. But if you've got two people that just naturally know how to talk to each other and they're comfortable, you know, kind of riffing with each other, Obviously, it's going to sound more honest, and it's going to have uh, it's going to have that charm of of genuine personality behind it too. Right, Corey, I'm going to fuck your ass. Oh, are you going to fuck my ass in? Well, I'm going to yeah, fuck I'm going to fuck ass. your ass real fucking. No, you can't fuck my ass while I'm fucking your ass. That doesn't fine. make sense. Stop well, fine, then I'm going to fuck your mouth. How about that? How about we do that? All right, scene? 
<laughs> All right, Corey, that's a little too close to home. That just <laughs> that sounded serious. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need you to back up. We'll, we'll go six feet, six feet. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with the standards. Right. <laughs> I need I need you to put your dick back in your pants, dude. That was just a <laughs> joke. This was improv, Corey. Dude. Yeah. I wasn't serious. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> you, you got my heart racing a little bit, Zin. I, I felt a little threatened, so you know I, I had to fight back. You know, you put me in a corner. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Are we? Are we? Did we say everything we wanted to say about Blood Sun Vendetta? Or, or Mick, do, is there anything you still want to say about Blood Sun Vendetta? Not really. I try not to hype it up too much, just because I want to wait until the full first episode is out before I, before I like really like. Hey, I want to talk about Blood Sun Vendetta. Um, in the meantime, I just want to keep my head down and get all the chapters out. And if uh, you know, if it gathers a small following of people that enjoy it while that's happening that's great once the first episode is done i think i'm probably going to be a little bit more i don't want to say shilly uh i'd like to not believe that i would do that but i think i will be a little bit more assertive about it like i will actually post like an instagram post like hey check out episode one or whatever which would have all six chapters or something like that um and then like hey if you like this support it on patreon because currently i very rarely i very i mean i i don't really like ask people to join the Patreon. I mean, it's there, and I mentioned that it, there's one. Join but... the Patreon. Join <laughs> the fucking Mixed Patreon. Patreon. Or, or, fuck or, your ass. or, <laughs> or wait until the first episode is out. And if you like where Mick, you think it's that going, that could be two years from now. Join the fucking it'll, Patreon. <laughs> it'll probably it'll probably be about a year yeah, until it's done. But... Um, before we move on though, we got we got some uh, Patreon questions from our patrons. Speaking of Patreon, so it's perfect segue. Spectra perfect. Lee asks, um, he says one. It seems like the animation style has changed quite a bit since the test chapter. Are you happy with the yeah. animation process as it now, or do you think it could be optimized more? And I think he's talking about how in the beginning you mentioned it was supposed to be like a uh, motion comic of yeah. some sort, and I noticed you did yeah. drop that from Chapter Zero. Yeah, so what happened was with Chapter Zero, um, Dorito Meatbag, an amazing artist, and I believe it's at Dorito Meatbag, uh, Dorito like the chip uh, on Twitter, amazing artist and even in the short time since the chapter zero till now their artwork is just fuck it. like it's evolved and it's just mind-blowing that said i feel like because i was i had somebody else's assets and i i mean i would draw the i, I would board it out you know what i mean I, i'd sketch the whole thing out and then they cleaned it up and made it look pretty and then i colored it and shaded it and then put it all together so they did the line work because of that i feel like i was a lot more comfortable with the motion comic kind of style but once i actually started animating chapter one that's when i realized it just it wasn't going to work in a larger format like as soon as like i was trying to create a mood like l let's say you've got people walking across you know the the um the zocalo if it's just like still frames of these dudes there's just something missing yeah. and then that feeling kept rising and and every single time i had a still frame where it was just going to be that shot it just i don't know something it just felt more and more like it needed stuff to happen and so i'd kind of you know i already spent enough i spent a lot of time on the background and i spent some time on the composition of the shot i've already drawn at least one asset well it's a walk cycle so you got to draw like six more or whatever and it's like okay you know whatever they're fine i'll do that then and then that just kind of became part of it but even in in chapter one like uh, Sangrio's head turn, that was like I think three frames that faded from one to the other. Or when he descends, when he descends into the crypt, I think that's like two frames. It's just like uh, you know, fades from like him stepping down that ladder, one frame, two frame. One yeah, frame, two frame. like yeah. those those initial influences from the stop motion com or the motion comic. Yeah, and then what ended up happening was is that I started using the liquify tool a lot, and um, and with a very with a uh, a very low frame rate and the liquify tool i just felt a lot more comfortable kind of keying out more frames um if you're not familiar with the liquify tool in procreate uh it allows you to move things around like oh. uh what do you uh, what do you mean move things around <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that's so what here's the select an... tool did yeah <laughs> yeah uh so an example is let's say i have imagine a face looking directly straight on at you right and you've got the eyes, you've got the nose, the mouth. Yeah. And you were to get the right pressure and the right brush size, 
you could pop your pen right in the middle of the face and you can drag it down and it'll sm- it'll basically smear all the features downward. Oh. So now and, and if you do it too much, it starts to blur and get really uh, gross. And, and obviously yeah. you need the right amount of pressure and the right brush size. But if you do it right, um, you can get it to look like the frame is looking now the face is looking down. So oh. I could do that three, I could do that two or three times if I want to get like a subtle movement, I will absolutely liquefy it. And that's why if you watch the thing on like a big screen at 1080p, you're probably going to see a lot of frames in between frames that look a little blurrier than the others if you pause. Um, ver- but, you know, a lot of people aren't necessarily looking on a big screen or it happens so fast that a lot of people don't even care. That's yeah. why I try to make sure that the final frame it, it lands on and the frame it starts in are not too liquefied because if you do that, then it'll it'll look like it'll end on a blur. It'll be like this bizarre effect where it starts yeah. off clean and yeah. then by the end of the movement, it's like this very blurry thing. Um, so I always try to make sure that those two frames, at the very least, are are clean, and then I can blur in or I can liquefy in between those to make it look like uh, there's more movement. Oh my god! So you're That's melting cool. people's faces <laughs> for art. <laughs> And it yes. works because it saves you time, <laughs> which is all an animator has is fucking time. So whatever you can do yeah. to save time without uh, detriment being detrimental oh, ab- to the production. Dude, absolutely. And that's the other thing is I think when I first started making Flash animations, a, a lot of it was because of my limited ability. And I still am very limited. But because of my very limited ability back then, it was always about finding like a shortcut. Like, OK, if I'm going to animate somebody walking, I'm just going to do like chest up like chest to head bouncing up and down, you know, right? Yeah. Um, and you still, you'll still see stuff like that in actual shows, in movies, in, in animes, all that kind of stuff. So it, there's still a time and place for that, but it wouldn't be my go-to. It would be like, what is, what shot is necessary, right? Versus what shortcuts can I take to speed this shit up? Because maybe the shot doesn't require that. Maybe you know, maybe you do need to see the whole dude walking because that creates more tension, or it, it, you know they're they're smaller, so they look more isolated. I, I don't know what the case may be. Um, and so I think as I've been working uh, on this project, the one thing I, I really like that I've taken away from it is that the mentality isn't so much like how do I, what's the shortcut around this mountain. It's more of like. I'm okay with shortcuts, but I still need to get over this mountain. I'm not going to bypass this mountain. I'm going to go through it as efficiently as I can, but I'm not just going to find a way to just not have to deal with this mountain. Does that make any sense? That yeah, makes absolutely. a lot of sense. Yeah, definitely. And that's a, that's a testament to your experience that you know what to give and take. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to I'd like to. Believe You'd like to believe, know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, but I would just say that as a as a general rule, finding the solutions for the necessary shots rather than avoiding the shots that you may find more difficult you learn so much so so much out of the necessity to complete it and you know i i can look back at even even stuff from the beginning of chapter two four months ago three months ago when i'm when i'm looking at some of those scenes i'm like shit man i could have done by the time I, four months later i'm like i could have done this so much better <laughs> i could have done this so much faster and so much it would have looked better and it would have happened faster but it's already done so fuck it i just you know keep going you know it works just keep going um so so that's why yeah. you think uh that episode is going to be complete in a year because you've learned all these different techniques that you're going to be continuously applying and growing and adapting onto I mean, is chapter it... three is already seven shots in, and it's been like less than a week. Very Damn. nice. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, I mean, I'm very happy with that. I still don't know what the final time tally is going to be because there's a few scenes that, um, I've never explored, and that's the other thing. Like, there's a lot of times that I'm exploring types of animation that I've never done before. I've seen it, and I, I try to emulate it in some way. Um. You know, especially the actiony stuff. You know, um, like I haven't done any combat yet, and there won't be until a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, once that happens, there's going to be a lot more learning there. There's going to be a lot of uh, stuff happening on the road, chasing vehicles. That's going to be a whole other bag of beans of you know other skills and shit that I'm going to have to figure out. And whether or not I do the 3D or not, I'm going to need to learn how to direct it and or utilize it. You know, implement it. Of um, course. Or, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So, have you ever seen the Berserk uh, <coughs> series? It gets shit on for its 3D. Like, 3D can literally ruin your series. Which one, though? Uh, isn't it the newer Berserk uh, anime yeah. that came out? I think out? the, well, n- the I newest. I newer in quotations. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That one did look like trash. You know what's weird? It looked like it had a weird filter over it, too. Like, it looked like <laughs> all, like, I don't know what the fuck was going on. But I did see the 3D, the 3D kind of 2D hybrid that they had for the first three parts of the Golden Ark. Oh, my had, like, God. The, I own those King. movies. They're amazing. They The way yeah. they utilized it worked very flawlessly. Yeah. So I thought the anime was to be great. <laughs> yeah. Good. No, it's almost like they, they pulled that Pixar shit or whatever it is. Or that dream DreamWorks thing where like they've got all these Kung Fu Panda assets and then they're like, cool, well, let's make a, a knockoff show and they hand over the assets, but they don't have the computer rendering power to like do <laughs> like decent poly and lighting. So yeah. it just looks like this cheap, crappy version of the of the original. Um but yeah, no, those movies they did a really good job of blending both uh 3D and 2D. I will say there were some things that kind of looked that kind of weirded me out. Um, but overall, I thought it was done very effectively and the one thing you can tell they loved about those 3D models was that they got some super subtle movements like um, Griffith, you know, right before uh, he turns, he uh, and literally physically turns. But he he has like this eye thing where his eye kind of like narrows just a little bit. And it takes so long like they you know what I mean? Because you had the 3D rig so you can do that. Like, yeah. you know, nobody had to animate 40 frames for this one eye <laughs> movement or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they, they definitely used it for like a lot of mood stuff. There was a ton of slow motion. And again, that's because they got it in 3d. They can, you know, they just slow the whole thing down. Um, in a normal animation, obviously slow motion is a big pain in the ass. You know, either you're going to do the fade to fade to fade, you know, frame to frame to frame. Um, or sometimes it just looks weird. I remember in Jojo's bizarre adventure part five, the anime when Bucciarati gets punched in the face by Giorno on the train for him, like time was like slowing down and it's speeding up when he gets punched in the face. They do like a slow-mo of his face getting punched and it, it looks weird. It does. It looks a little <laughs> funky. It, it looks like they use like a compute, like they use the after effects pin tool to like the puppet <laughs> pin tool to like kind of move things around. And you know what? I'm doing that. So I'm fine. I understand. Like I've definitely used that, uh, that tool, um, but I also understand why sometimes it doesn't look quite right. Um, but a pure 3D model, yeah. I mean, you can, oh, the things you could do. Oh, the rotation. <laughs> oh, oh. All right, oh. all right, all right, all right. Well, we'll talk about animation. Corey, should we go back to the past, who's uh, Newgrounds' early days? Should we Should we have everyone be reminded of who Mick is and what he did? His, his, his dark past. <laughs> if they don't know about Mick and his new grounds past, I, I mean, I'm a little surprised. My dark skeletons, my <laughs> bloody skeletons yeah. in the closet. Yeah. I t I'm surprised you're even talking about him, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many videos on new grounds that you either animated yourself or you lent your voice to. And there's some key ones that stand out to me. And I know... Uh, Zinn has one in particular that he really loves. Oh, my like God, bro. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Changed my fucking <laughs> life, bro. It's it's literally you just bullying someone. But it's, <laughs> it wasn't. It's perfect. First of all, that track is by DMAC. DMAC made the audio for that. And okay, I, okay. And I found you did that, the typography. I, and I found it in the portal. And I remember stumbling across it. And it was just the voiceover track. There was no music. Um, but I just remember bursting out laughing and during that period of time i was uh i was working with my ex-wife and i i was working on websites and stuff but that night i had eaten uh, a bunch of salsa like really spicy salsa okay. and, <laughs> and i had the worst stomach ache that i i couldn't sleep like because my stomach hurt so much so instead of going to sleep it, it's like three in the morning and i just started i was just like oh fuck i gotta do something to take my mind off of this because i can't you know light lay down and I just got like some water and uh, just started, I don't know, I just started animating that thing. Um, and then by the next day, you know, the sun was up. My stomach was maybe a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I had finished it by that, that, by that point. I mean, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, but it was definitely one of the first things to, to gain attention uh, in terms of my creations. I, I had plenty of stuff that never even made it through the portal. Um, 
to really? go bland the fuck out. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> what ideas? What ideas didn't make it through the portal? We oh, gotta just know. We stupid, gotta know. Uh, some stupid like Ego Raptor ripoff of Mega Man shit. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> there was there was just stuff that I mean, you know, I, and I'm glad it didn't go through. Honestly, I, I think that process exists for a reason. Sometimes, <laughs> if it's if it's not abused, you know, if it's not like targeted harassment to just blam somebody that you don't like. Um, right, right. But yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad it didn't make it out there. Uh, but after that, even after dot, 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 it, it took me forever because it took me forever to make anything that anyone ever recognized after um, because my animation skills were still such garbage. And so, you know, I kind of, I don't know, I, that was something that was more in line with what I do for a living, which was, you know, graphic design and, and stuff like that. So while it was simple, um, obviously the spirit of it was D max voice and the content of it was just so funny. Um, if anything, it's I just, so funny. I, I, I don't, I don't even like taking credit for it because I feel like the real work was, was the in voice acting, was in the yeah. voice acting <laughs> and not just the voice acting, but the idea, the idea to go find yeah. that review and then read it like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so funny. the, the Bikawas. Yeah. Be a be cool. cool. still makes me laugh. Be cool. It was, was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, I almost cr- cry thinking about that. Man. It's funny because I still talk to him and we're still friends. And still occasionally, randomly, he'll bring up how that was like something that got him a bunch of attention. And I'm like, dude your voice is the thing that got me my attention is like circle jerking each other um, yeah what <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite um series that you actually put together was the clap series oh yeah <laughs> it to me it to this day it's still one of the the funniest things you put out there and mainly because you're just mocking the american people for not uh, especially with the last one, not knowing how to read pictograms. Oh, yeah. And by far, it is one. It makes me laugh so hard <laughs> just hearing you even try to uh, an, a pronounce pictogram <laughs> and you can't even say it yourself. Like, pick, 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 die. You get all pissed off. It's hilarious. The reaction to that was interesting only in that, um, like, my mom helped me with some of the stuff. Like, because there were some translations I just wanted to make sure of um, in terms of what I was sharing information wise. And. You know, she she enjoyed it, and we had family friends that enjoyed it. There was a small group of people that took offense to it. Um, not, <laughs> of not, course. Not a lot of it. Well, I mean, if I publish, let's be fair. If I publish that right now, I, I'd be oh, I'd be God. blowing the fuck out of the water. Like the absolutely. the voiceover community would absolutely be like, "Who the fuck is this racist?" All that shit. Are you se- wait? Are you serious? Yeah. Though? Oh, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, nowadays, absolutely. I, nowadays, absolutely. Um, but the thing is, is that. The majority of the Asian or Chinese people that do understand what I'm saying understand that not only is this coming from a place of experience rather than, you know, mocking, um, but most of the time I am making just making fun of white people. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the the white people that are all offended because they think I'm, you know, offending Chinese people. It's like. Oh man, I really wish you could understand what I was saying, dude. <laughs> well, I'm upset because the comedy was legitimate. Like, look at these characters. Don't this look like human? Don't this look like what are you, stupid American? Like, look at this. This is clearly a dragon. Like, that is so fucking yeah. funny, bro. I wanted to go on oh, record. Or I do not hate white people, and I do not think <laughs> Americans are stupid and fat and all this shit. Um, but I will say that that is a bit of a stereotype that does exist. Um, so there, it's part of the character. Yeah. As, as we're uh, as we're still diving into the past, you know, one of the things that people may know you for pretty well is from you know the Sleepy Cabin, Sleepy Cast crew, and 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 all that, all the good stuff yeah. you did with those guys. Um, you you want to talk about uh, you know, being part of the Sleepy Cabin crew and <laughs> you know that that portion of your life and was it fun was it not fun at times yeah like, what were the good the yeah good who do you it? hate and who do you like yeah yeah who who's, who's <laughs> girlfriend whose girlfriend did i punch yeah um <laughs> yes no, <laughs> no. uh no it was uh so it happened sleepy cabin is is, is always going to be uh an interesting uh part of my life I, some people think you know, some of my friends even were like, wow, you know, you got the tattoo. Like, uh. 
Um, and I get it. It's a little to some people it can feel a little cringe, like, oh, that that kind <laughs> of like dedication to something, uh, especially your own thing, I guess. Um, the thing, though, for me is, A, uh, I joined Sleepy uh, Cabin a- at the exact time that I was going through my divorce. So I had literally packed up everything from uh, Minnesota, put it in a car, and then drove it to Philly. And then once I got there, um, Stamp- Stamper had uh, invited me to live in the house. And um, I had already done, like, the intro for them. And we were talking about getting me on the podcast at some point, but, uh, you know, just the opportunity hadn't risen yet. And I was in Minnesota. Um, so that kind of happened afterwards. So being a part of Sleepy Cabin and and everything else was really during a big transition in my life. You know, I was single again. I didn't have the house or the dog or the wife or the job or anything like that. And so yeah. starting over. I felt like maybe maybe I was a bit attached or, or I was a little bit overzealous or passionate about it um, just because that was a thing that was happening during that period of time that was a good distraction and, and something to uh, invest time and energy into. And ultimately, I think we all know kind of what happened. I mean, there was a lot of ideas. There was a lot of passion, just like any new grounder would have, you know, when they're starting something new. Um, a few things were made, but not all the things that were that everyone intended. Um, I think everyone went into it thinking that this really was going to work, that we were all going to like become like a small studio and we were going to pump out stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, there were definitely some things. I know Chris, you know, he, he put, put out some stuff and, um, you know, he was working with, you know, the rest of the guys and. I don't know. I, I think ultimately what happened was is that there was a lot of motivation and a lot of good ideas. But then when it came to the execution, I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day, a lot of these guys, like they didn't want it to feel like they had like they had, like there was this obligation to do. Things. Yeah. You know, like the, their best creation comes from them being able to just have fun and explore ideas like there's no corporate gun, you know, to their head. And yeah. not that Sleepy Cabin ever had that. But that it did kind of start to feel that way. There was a bit of pressure. There was a Patreon for a while, which we initi- then we eventually cut that off. Um, and I think there was also the pressure of like, are we delivering what we, you know, hoped to deliver? And then that pressure just kind of made it harder for it to be a fun, creative experience, um, which is where these guys thrive, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and so I think ultimately the podcast was a way for us to stay connected with the audience to still share the personalities um and you know have have a good laugh and and share that with people and there was a period of time i think when some of the guys they the podcast was a secondary idea it you know initially it was just going to be creation and i think the podcast was very secondary and there was almost a like a there wasn't a whole lot of experience with podcasts like with the guys but back then so i think for them a lot of they initially thought it was going to be kind of like throwaway content, you know, just kind of like, eh, you know, we just talk and we post it. But then, I don't know, I think the reaction to it from the audience was that people were really connecting. You know, there were a lot of life stories and there was a lot of, you know, talking about expectations and just kind of, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. You're sharing your personality, you're sharing your experiences. And I think a lot of people related to that. And yeah. we had a whole whole different cornucopia and rainbow of personalities on the show. <laughs> that's that's um, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very different people from all walks of life, all hanging out and, and having a laugh. Um, so, yeah, I think that obviously that became kind of more of the the regular thing that we were doing. Um, but even that, you know, we did that for several years and there's only so many stories you can tell. And I think after a while, like with with most of the creations, it's like when it when it runs its course, where we were kind of like, you know, I think, I think this is, are we done? Are we, you know, like there was never like yeah. a, let us make this true finale. It was just more like, are, are we just not feeling this anymore, guys? You know, yeah. <laughs> yep. and, and then just kind of, kind of letting that be what it was, you know? Uh, I, I mean, I think we all would have rather that than the, uh, I don't know, like driving it into the ground and, you know, getting new cast members, you know, to replace people. So the show keeps going, some corporate bullshit like that. It just wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. it would never be the same. And so, you know, the moment people weren't, the moment it was kind of done, it was done. And the truth is Oni Plays is basically Sleepy Cabin 2. 
Um, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. he's got Zach and, and, you know, Lyle would be there. Tomar is there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, there's still funny stories and, and shit like that. And the personalities are there. And I'm going to be perfectly frank. I think, like, for example, I think my personality was probably the least favorite of a lot of audience members. Um, <laughs> no, I, I love, I'm, I'm I love very... when you joined, man. It was awesome. I, hey, I, I appreciate that you appreciate it. But honestly, <laughs> even when I listen to it, I don't like to listen to myself talking on the podcast. Um, and, and that was a criticism that I saw in the comments. And that wasn't something that I was like, oh, boohoo. I was just like, yeah, no, I know. But you know what? <laughs> so-and-so decided not to show up today, so I had to fucking be on the show. Sorry, I didn't want to be on it either, asshole. You know? Well, the, um, moment, the moments that I loved were were the moments that you pissed off Jeff all the time, whether it was burping or farting, and him just like, God damn it, Mick, the fuck? You know, that's the thing. It's like, I don't, I don't know if there's a whole lot of things I could say to Jeff. Like, genuinely say that would actually piss him off. Because I'm not I'm not like that. I'm not good at triggering Jeff. Other guys, some of the other guys, they know Jeff's buttons and they, they know how to they know how to get a reaction out of him. Me, I don't know. I feel like it would be too contrived if I tried to do it. It's just not my personality. However, the most genuine way, yeah, for me to get him mad was by accidentally burping or farting around him. And it's not like he's a prude. It just so happens that in the scenarios where he got mad, it was just like there was literally a podcast we did where I was laying on my back with my legs up on the edge of the couch <laughs> and he was like by my feet. Right. So he was sitting in a chair by my feet. So basically he's got a shot straight at my ass. <laughs> right. And we were I forgot how it happened. I don't know if I was laughing or something, but I just I fucking just lifted up my leg and blasted it afar. I wasn't even thinking about Jeff being in the trajectory like line of fire. And. He immediately, like, <laughs> I, th there was, like, some serious guerrilla rage. Like, <laughs> he, if, if he was, yeah, if this was a different timeline, if he was, like, a barbarian or something, and where we were cavemen, he would have grabbed me by both my legs and just ripped me in half. Like, he was <laughs> not happy about it. Um, I think I know what I episode that guys. was, too, because I can't, I, yeah. I, there was, like, one in particular where he was just like, ah, oh, God Damn it, Mick. Yeah. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> oh, I, I cut out some stuff. I, I, th he was he was very, I think there was even like a pause. We had to take a break or something. Like, they were genuinely mad. As well, he should be. It's a fucking rude thing to do. I get it. it I didn't intend to do it. It just fucking slipped out, literally. <laughs> I think I think what's genius is just the idea from Sleepy Cabin. Because I've talked to a few artists, and a lot of artists were following Sleepy Cabin, and they thought... Hey, it's possible now that me and my friends can literally do art and get a place together and try to make that work through either commissions or like their own little little way. It just I know a lot of even though we part. yeah, even though we didn't actually accomplish, I think what the ultimate goal was, um, we did accomplish some stuff, and we definitely made some people happy, and that to me is probably the most important thing. Um, you know, whether it's through animation or through stories or through music or through uh, you know, short videos, whatever the case may be. If you're, if you're bringing something, um, and you're making people happy, that that's cool to me. Um, and so while we may not have accomplished all the things we wanted, I definitely seen a lot of people come together in small groups and either they've got a podcast or they've got, uh, you know, they'd been working on their animations and stuff like that. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely, it, it's great to see people doing that. I think that's a good way to kind of wrap things up here for the night. But before we go, I wanted to talk about one video that you did do with the the Sleepy Cabin Boys. And to this day, it still makes me laugh every single time I see it. And it would have to be potato salad. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. the one question I have about that video in general is, how did it feel to just have potato salad drenched and ketchup squirted all over your head? <laughs> You know what? It uh, Stamper and I had shaved our heads prior to that, and so I think the skin was just more exposed and sensitive because I didn't even know this was fucking possible. But <laughs> that the potato salad has mustard in it, and oh, when you put it over like open skin, it fucking burns. Dude. <laughs> like it, it it's, I felt like I was getting like a. A chemical burn on my fucking head. It was terrible. Um, 
but yeah, it was, I mean, it was super fun. The, I just loved when we were, I mean, I know we probably told the story already, but just rolling around to like the different supermarkets, buying up every <laughs> single thing of potato salad they had. Just for and that like, one we shot. Went, <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we had to go to like three supermarkets and we would go <laughs> and we literally just get a whole like shopping cart and just like, and we're like asking the butcher at the deli at the supermarket. We're like, is this all you got? You got more in the back? Can you make some? Can you make some really quick? No? Okay. We're good then. Sorry. We we took all your potato salad. Bye. And then we'd go to the next store and do the same thing. And all the cash, like everyone who worked at the cash register, all three of them were always just like, just, they tried not to say something, but they clearly were like, what the hell is going on here? They, <laughs> Yeah. Nobody it needs this fun. much potato salad. <laughs> Nobody should. What are they doing? What are these kids doing? Right. Yeah. The FBI tailed you home that night. I don't <laughs> know that. Yeah, once you buy like a certain poundage of, of potato salad, there's a ping on like the NSA's like supercomputer. <laughs> they just start tracking your every movement from there on out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, if we're wrapping up though, Mick. Yep. Yo. Yeah. Is it just Blood Sun Vendetta in the future? Or are you going to try to do like little things on the side? Or is it just strictly BSV, let's get this shit done? Like, what's yeah, going on there? It's basically BSV, let's get this shit done. Uh, after the first episode, so the six chapters, uh, I don't know. I might, I might kind of veer off for like a, a month, maybe, and do something. I don't know. Um, we'll see how I feel about it. I might feel super, I might feel so fucking motivated by the end of episode one that I like take out a loan. And start hiring studios and shit. I have no fucking idea. I might, <laughs> I might just turn the whole thing into a manga and just be like, "Fuck animation." I'm, I'm just gonna I, do still I was surprised there wasn't a manga to go behind this you already. Know, people, people ask me this. They're like, "Hey, have you ever thought about making this into a manga? You've already got the stills." I'm like, "Yeah, let me take time out of my fucking day while I'm waking up <laughs> in my in my shit crusted underwear that I haven't changed in a week, trying to finish this fucking chapter and just roll over and pump out a fucking manga on top of." that dude yeah yeah no please 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 ruin all the endings before you t spend years <laughs> animating it <laughs> please god <laughs> no i don't know but it might i mean i've when people ask that i'm always like you know for all i know it might end up being how i end up telling the story is you know finding a different medium and that's the good thing is that i've made no promises in terms of like how i'm like, maybe by the end of episode three, everything's in three fucking D. I don't know. You know, I'm still... The most important thing to me is the framing of this, the pacing of this, the development of this, the story behind it. And, you know, I just want to tell the story however I can. It just so happens that this this is the tool set that I have available to me, and or at least that I'm comfortable with, and that I feel like I can somewhat tell the story with. But eventually, even that skill set's going to be not enough, especially when I get to, like, the car chases and, and shit like that, or the motorcycle road chases, because I'm not going to be able to animate that. I know that for a fact. Um, it's going to be 3D. Uh, so I just need to figure something out. Well, I, I'm sure the series is in good hands, and you'll execute it. Yeah, absolutely. I will try. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> <laughs> well, And then um, I, one last question. Hold on, Corey. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, are, the, are you <laughs> Are people allowed to drink at MAGFest anymore since 2016? <laughs> I'm just panels? curious. On panels? Yeah, on panels. On panels. I don't know if they made a I don't know if they made a rule about it. I've made a rule for myself that I don't drink <laughs> on panels anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, no, after that, that was the last panel that I ever drank on, but I did I did I had plenty of panels after that. Uh, yeah, I saw the I saw the 2017 one in the very least. So but yeah, everyone so was drinking water. Everyone people was drinking were, water. People were so pissed off at that. Well, not pissed <laughs> off, but there was a lot of people who fucking like left halfway through because they were waiting for another car wreck to happen, um, and it just it just wasn't going to happen that year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I always say that I don't regret it um, <laughs> because because. Uh, I think it's an important lesson, you know, and the one, the one thing, and I keep it with me, you know, I, it all, that shame goes nowhere. Like I, I live with that shame. It still pops in my head. I still think about the kid who was dressed as Sans. Who I fucking yelled at. I, I still think about, you know, the, the, the people in the audience and the disappointment of the fans that, that came out and drove out to see me. And they just saw this fucking blackout drunk asshole on stage screaming at kids. Like I, I, <laughs> I'm I live with that and I and I should there's there's nothing to erase that or make it okay or you know and uh th those are the experiences you need sometimes I will say in my defense it's not an excuse that there is no excuse but in my defense that was literally the 
the uh, the weekend that I had signed my divorce papers. I hadn't slept for three straight days. I was actually on Twitter showing pictures of sunrises and sunsets because I had a, a deadline for how it should have ended. And so I wanted to get it done before Mac. It had to be done before MacFest. So I was just racing the clock trying to get this commission done. And then as soon as it was done off of like literally maybe four hours of sleep in the last three days, I got in a car and I drove down to MagFest. And then as soon as I, I got out, there was a hotel room where I saw all these friends that I hadn't seen in, in like a year. And they just started handing me drinks and I love to drink. And so I drank a lot. And by the time we got down to the, the actual panel, I was already wasted. I think I would have been okay. I, I think I would have been all right on the stage if that was where it stopped. But then Amin handed me a bottle of uh, whiskey on stage. I think it was Woodford Reserve. And Ooh, if you watched the video, yeah. I drink I drink the entire thing in about 20 minutes. So, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm already wasted. And then I drink a bottle of whiskey in 20 minutes. Yeah, I black the fuck out and <laughs> I, I i had i had a lot of demons i had a lot of anger i had there was just a lot of bad stuff that should have never never been i should have never exposed to anybody to that shit and it was just hugely irresponsible and i never i just never thought that it, something like that could happen uh, you never do. Like, I never went out with the intent of like, yeah, I'm going to get blackout wasted and fucking scream at the the artist for, you know, uh, Undertale. And like, <laughs> it was just such a disappointment to so many fucking people, especially to myself, obviously. The other thing was, I don't know if you guys know this, I was dating uh, Megan at the time, Megan Lamb. She was, uh, uh, I dated her for a couple of years, but she worked at the Behemoth. You guys know the Behemoth, obviously. Yes. Yeah, of course. And so because I was dating her, she wasn't there but she was watching it with the other employees of the behemoth. Oh, my God. So they, her company and all of her friends or whatever got to fucking see this shit happen, too. It was just <laughs> shit. what a it was just the ultimate, ultimate disappointment. I mean, the worst was when I woke up and I had gotten like text messages and I got this one email uh, or I got a couple of emails. But I got this one in particular that really just fucking. I mean, I'm still, I'm like so hungover. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I'm reading this email and it was like, me and my girlfriend like drove from Texas to, to see you because we really like, you know, uh, your work and we, and we really wanted to support you and come out. It was like, I've never been so disappointed in seeing somebody that I respected. Oh. Um, and like, <laughs> you can't, you can't undo that. You can't erase that from your brain. You will remember that forever. And I deserved it, obviously, but it is something, like I said, I don't regret. I carry that with me everywhere. And I still got stuff to learn. You know, I still do drink too much sometimes and I, and I still do stupid shit sometimes. And, but obviously I, <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I just think it, it's a, it's a really shitty thing that I'm not going to say it needed to happen, but it did. And, uh, yeah, you live and you learn and you grow. You're never too old to make a fool of yourself and just know that if I'm ever going through a divorce again and I'm not sleeping, <laughs> not to get yeah. blackout drunk and yeah. stand up on a stage in front of people. And that's yeah. some good advice. If, the, <laughs> yeah. if, that, if that Sands kid wants to come on the podcast, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll take a I, moment to I, ask I, him how he feels. I, I, still, I still feel so bad about that. Oh, God. oh Well, you know, you learn from it. It's, I don't want to say it's whatever, but the worst, from an outsider's perspective, no, it was the funny, worst, but... the wor I know, but that's the worst part is that yeah. there was, I think because some people, kind, I don't know, there, there was a certain amount of half the people were in shock and half the people were laughing, you know what I mean? But that's the worst part was like, here I was being unequivocally or whatever the word is, a dick. <laughs> and instead of, instead of somebody just turning off my mic, I'm not blaming them, but I'm instead of people booing me. Or something like that. When I made fun of this kid, everyone's fucking... And I didn't really make fun of the kid himself. I just said, like, who, who cares about Undertale or something? And I'd never played it. I didn't know anything about it. Um, but the fact that other people laughed at that, that's what fucking... That kills yeah. me on top of it. Yeah. Because whatever that kid went through, they didn't get, like... This, I hope they had somebody there to, to give them some support. It, just, it fucking kills me that I did that. Wait, are we talking about that kid that, like, someone else walked in from the crowd and, like, he screamed in his ear? Was that no, no, no. That was that was a different thing. That wasn't my fault. I didn't do that. 
Uh, that was that was that was somebody else. Um, okay. Still, also not cool, but um, yeah, no, th- this one kid, I just man. Anyway, I'll I'll stop. I don't want to end it on a bummer. No, right you're good. No, 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 no. This is a high note. This is a high note. Mick Lowry's yeah. a changed man. He's working out blood, <laughs> blood exactly. sweat, vendetta. Uh, I'm he, still he thinking about you, kid. <laughs> do anything you put your mind to (laughs) yeah well mick thank you so much for coming on the podcast tonight it's been a real treat talking to you man Um, absolutely man my pleasure yeah it for for those who you know are fully invested into the community of newgrounds i'm pretty sure that this has been an absolute treat for them so i know it's been for me and i know it has been for zen so yeah yeah before we uh before we get off you know you want to plug anything else before we're officially done for the night? More Blood Sun Vendetta? Or your yeah, yeah, yeah. Socials? Yeah, I want to plug. I want to plug. Um, check out the Newgrounds podcast, guys. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> look at this guy. It's, look at this it's guy. It's fucking sick, dude. Fuck we're Sleepy Cabin. Sleepy Cabin, fries. those guys are losers, dude. What you need <laughs> is some fucking Newgrounds podcast, guys. That's what yeah. you really need. Who needs um, only plays? You got voices <laughs> by Corey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take pride in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not really. I mean, if you guys aren't, if you guys care about what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I mostly post updates on Twitter, which is Rice Pirate Mick. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I, I'm not really here to plug anything. Yeah, follow him. Check out his older animations. I think Cherry Family's fucking kind of cool. Oh, thanks. The Cherry Family Christmas is like, why is this guy so fucking wholesome? He's <laughs> <laughs> my fucking bills. He does that too. Yeah. Oh, and Mick, if you ever want to be back on the podcast, I have like fifty other questions I would love to ask. Coming <laughs> here, let's get you. Let's get you back. Sounds on good. Here. We'll get a reunion going. All right. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh and one more time, happy birthday to Waterflip. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.